Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a factorial equation with cubes. We have n factorial equals n cubed plus n squared minus 30. And n is a non-negative integer. We're going to solve for n. Now, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the solution. And then hopefully if you have some time left towards the end, I can also show you how I came up with a problem like this. I hope you'll be interested in that. So we have something like this that has n factorial on one side and a polynomial on the other side. Obviously you can graph the factorial function which is going to be for real numbers in general using the gamma function and then also graph the polynomial which is cubic, find its roots, so on and so forth, or at least find their intersection point. Of course the graph doesn't always give you the exact answer but it might give you an approximate answer or it might give you ideas. What if there is no intersection points? Then there are no integer solutions, right? Uh, one of the strategies that we use with these kinds of expressions is to divide both sides by something, right? So let's start with that and kind of talk about what that means and then we're gonna go into the details. So n factorial contains n because it can be written as n times n minus 1 factorial and this can actually be used to prove that 0 factorial equals 1 because if you replace n with 1 you get 1 factorial equals 0 factorial times 1 or 1 factorial equals 0 factorial which means they're both 1. Make sense? Such a quick proof, right? Now, that's not what we're after. Let's go ahead and see what we can do. So after writing this as n times n minus 1 factorial I can actually go ahead and divide both sides by n. And what good uh, does that do? Well, first of all, it simplifies the problem a little bit because we kind of get a quadratic. But not only that, if we divide everything by n, this also gives us something nice right here. You'll see in a little bit what that means. n minus 1 factorial equals n cubed divided by n is n squared. And this is n and this is 30 over n. Since n is to be a non-negative integer, 30 over n it needs to be an integer, so n needs to divide 30. 30 is so many divisors, right? What are they? 1 is a divisor, 2 is a divisor, 3 is a divisor, 4 doesn't go, 5 goes, 6 goes, 10 goes, 15 goes, and 30 goes. So n could potentially be one of these values. Obviously, if n is not one of these values, then n minus 1 factorial is not going to be an integer, which is not good, right? So you get the idea, we do need one of these values. But which one? You can test them out, <laughs> but you don't really need to go that, uh, to that length. Because what I'm about to explain to you is actually going to really shorten the process. And here's how it goes. Of course, I had to work something backwards sometimes. When somebody solves a math problem, it looks like magic because how on earth did they come up with something like this? The secret? You just work backwards. You want something to happen? You try to get there and then you just reverse engineer it and boom, there you go. So it shouldn't be coming as a surprise if I tell you that, okay, 120 is 5 factorial. You know that, right? And 5 factorial is definitely greater than 6 times 7, which is equal to 42. And you might be like, why are you comparing 120 and 42? It's almost like 3 times bigger. That's not a problem. This is what we need. Now notice that this is the inequality I was trying to get. And how is this related to our problem? You'll see in a little bit. Okay? So, 5 factorial is greater than 6 times 7. You agree with that? I hope you do. Now, we're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 6. And that's going to give us something interesting. 6 times 5 factorial equals 6 squared times 7. And obviously the motivation behind multiplying both sides by 6, it actually makes sense because that gives you another factorial. If you multiply by 7, it wouldn't be helpful as much. So this becomes 6 factorial. And then this becomes 6 squared times 7. So what? 42 times 7? It's, I think, 294. Is it something like that? 36 times 7. Okay, I just couldn't thought of it. Let's quickly do it. No, no. It doesn't end in 4 anyways. Okay. 
it's 252. But you don't really need that. You don't need to know the value because it's better if you keep it factored. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this 7 as 6 plus 1. I can, right? But why? <laughs> the answer is easy. After you distribute, you get 6 cubed plus 6 squared. Now, does that look familiar? Go back to the original equation. Does that look familiar? And I can hear you say yes. Now, here's what, what I did. I basically told you that, okay, if n is equal to 6, the expression on the right-hand side is going to be small. And you're going to subtract 30 from it, making it even smaller. So n factorial wins. In other words, if n is equal to 6, then n factorial will be greater than n cubed plus n squared minus 30, which is a poor polynomial, right? Obviously, factorial grows much faster, and at some point, it's just going to take over, right? And it happened at 6. Does it happen at 5? You can test it out. Actually, you'll be surprised if you replace n with 5, because that's going to give you n factorial will be 120, and n cubed plus n squared minus 30 is going to be 125 plus 25 minus 30, which is 150 minus 30, which is 120. Uh-oh, we got a solution. Uh-oh, Houston, we don't have a problem, we have a solution. Great, so n equals 5 seems to work. n equals 6, no, because factorial is going to start beating the polynomial, and obviously it's going to get bigger much faster, right? So that tells us, hey, when you get to 6, stop which means 5 is the largest value. That's why we need these boundaries. Make sense? And how do you think I got it? I got this. Well, I kind of started off with, okay, I want 6 factorial, hopefully, to be greater than this. I didn't include 30 because I knew that was going to work. And then I kind of tried to work this, and that's what I ended up with. Make sense? So kind of start with what you want and try to get there and just reverse the process, and people will be amazed. I think you'll be amazed too. Okay, so we got a solution, but the million dollar question is, is that the only solution? And I would say, let's explore. So one thing to keep in mind is, why did we check 6 and 5? Because they're both factors of 30. So 6 is the largest, I mean, 5 is the largest solution, so none of these are going to work. And 5 already worked, so I have three more candidates. 1, 2, 3, as easy as A, B, C, right? So how can we test those out really quick? I mean, I'm pretty sure you'll realize that, okay, n equals 1 is way too small. Because think about it. This is going to give you a 2 there. Are you serious? It's going to be negative. You don't want that. What about n equals 2? That's still too small. My last hope, hope is n equals 3. Is that going to work? Let's test it out. 3 factorial is 6. And 3 cubed plus 3 squared minus 30 is 27 plus 9 minus 30. 36 minus 30, which is equal to 6. Aha! Uh -huh. I got another solution. Beautiful. So n equals 3 is just another solution. Therefore, we have two solutions because nothing bigger than 5 is going to work. Nothing less than 5 besides for 3 will work. So we only got two solutions. Let me quickly tell you how I came up with this problem. I could probably spare a minute or two. So here's what I did. I want my n factorial to equal a cubic function like this. Why did I skip n? Because I didn't want my cubic to be too long. I want it a little shorter, like with three terms. You can even make two terms, but it's going to be tougher. And I don't want just a single solution because I could easily come up with a question like n factorial equals n cubed minus 5, and then this only has one solution. Did you figure it out? I hope you did. But anyways, that's a different uh, discussion. But here, I want two solutions. And I kind of tested out, okay, do you think n equals 5 is going to work? I plugged it in. I got 120 on the left. I got 125 here and then plus 25a plus b. This gave me an equation 25a plus b is equal to negative 5. That's one equation. I do need another equation because that's going to be a system. And then I also want n equals 3 to be a solution. And I don't know why. Uh, obviously, n equals 5 and n equals 4 did not work out because I tested it out. But if you replace n with 3, you're going to get 27 plus 9a plus b 
equals 3 factorial, which is 6. And from here, we get 9a plus b equals negative 21. Now, if you take these two equations and solve it as a system, we get integer solutions for a and b, which is awesome. That's how we got the problem. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.